What is up guys and welcome back to another Raid Channel Legends video with me The Real Deal. So we are going to be taking on the Spirit Iron Twins Stage 15 today. Um, really excited, I've got a team comp that can finally just smash it, 100% success rate and we've stopped wasting that energy. Um, big shout out to my clan leader um, Kodo Kushi who sort of, he didn't give me the full team for this comp but um, he helped me with four champions that makes this team work. So big shout out to him, so Kodo or Kodo Kushi. Um, you might see him in Channel 1 or Channel 420, he's an absolute legend, so a lot of love and big shout out to him because he is an absolute legend. Um, yeah, so let's just get straight into it and I'll show you how to one key uh, Spirit Affinity Iron Twins with no problems. So this is the team comp and um, we've got Geomancer, Brogni, Stagnite, Godseeker and Mithrala. Um, so Stagnite is probably the MVP for this team comp to work. So basically Stagnite, um, he's reducing the damage that the boss does to us. Um, that slow that he throws out as well is really useful. Um, also, if anyone um, doesn't land like a debuff, um, he'll put increased accuracy on them as well. So he's doing so much for us and he is a solid, solid champion. Um, yeah, so he is the real MVP for this team comp to work. Um, then we've got Godseeker, basically, who does loads of healing and has two revives. So if anyone sort of dies, they'll, you know, she'll quickly um, bring them back up. Um, second time, she'll revive and put their skills on cooldown as well. Um, so that's great. So say Geomancer dies, she brings back up, um, puts his skills on cooldown, and then um, basically can do his HP burn again. So that's just amazing. Um, but yeah, loads of healing. She also increases buffs as well. So that's going to increase um, strengthen, increase accuracy, um, Block debuffs, Brogni's shields as well. So just solid, solid work from her. Mithrala, can't can't sing her praises enough. Um, poison damage, um, Hex as well. So Hex helps us increase damage that we do to the boss. She's also cleansing the decrease attack and drop defense from the boss as well. Um, throws out strengthen on us as well. And she's also got an increased accuracy that we absolutely do need to beat the boss. Um... Geomancer does actually struggle with this affinity just because he's false. But otherwise, you know, obviously he's used in every single iron team that I've actually seen. Sorry, iron twin team that I've seen. Um, his HP burn is doing all the damage. And his passive is just procking all the time, doing more damage. And then Brogni, just one of my favorite champions. Um, he's like helping reduce damage that the boss does to us with his big fat shields. He's also reflecting damage back to the boss as well. So, you know, this team comp is just so solid and yeah, you're going to be getting 100% win rates and just absolutely smashing it and not wasting energy anymore. Yeah, so about two minutes, uh, 20 seconds into the run and we should be like beating the boss any second now. Um, so it's a pretty fast run as well. And here we go. Come on. Almost there. Come on, here we go, here we go. Almost there, almost there. I promise guys, we'll, okay, so it's about, I think about two minutes there to sort of a three minute run. So yeah, really fast team, pow, Uppercut, bitch. sit down. There we go. So that is the, um, that's the run. Um, so Geomancer doing a little bit less damage than normal, 3.2 million, um, Godseeker and Brogni, you know, both doing some solid healing, 400k, 316k, um, and Brogni actually doing some decent damage as well to the boss, and Mithrala doing 400k, he's just about 600, um, and Stagnite doing a little bit of damage, but, you know, it's not about, it's not always about the numbers, you know, these champions are really carrying the team, and you sort of need all the pieces to the puzzle to try and beat the boss, um, but yeah, so let's have a look at the gear and stats. So first up, we've got Stagnite, um, just want to say as well, like one of the problems that I think I made and a lot of people made when um, this boss first came out is that everyone was really focused on resistance and that's not the way to go with this boss. Um, it turns out having lots of defense is more important. Um, and also one thing I was making a mistake of is I was really stacking HP over defense and actually you do need some defense to survive the boss. So we've got um, HP gloves, HP chest and speed boots. Defense ring, uh, HP uh, amulet, and then accuracy on the um, banner. To be fair, I should probably I should bump up um, 
Stagnite's accuracy probably needs around, I'd say sort of 500 to 600 accuracy to like land more successfully. But um, this Stagnite, because he's got a shield set, he's just built for like general dungeon content. And um, that's why he's got so much HP on him. But total stats, we've got 65k HP, 2.7k defense, quite fast at 2042. Uh, and then 353 accuracy. Like I said, they would like that to be a little bit higher. Um, masteries, these are just very standard um, masteries that everyone pretty much uses for Stagnite. Um, next up, we've got Geomancer, everyone's favorite garden gnome. Look at him, he's so angry. So he's like just angry all the time. I don't know what's wrong with him. So I've gone triple perception, which is a great way to go with Geomancer. Um, it really helps you reach that... Um, accuracy threshold that you need to get um i've not done his masteries for like uh all his masteries um masteries i've not done all his glyphs yet either so i could probably bump up his accuracy but i don't feel like it's necessary to be honest but yeah we've got like with, i did focus on defense with him a little bit so defense gloves and um, accuracy chest hp boots and um, defense ring hp on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner um, masteries once again just really very very um, sort of standard stuff and one thing I really like on him is circle of magic magic just to try and reduce the cooldown on your um, his a3 oh oh dear what have I done there all right let's get back so we're on geomancer um, next up is uh, god seeker number three so originally my God Seeker, this is where I made like a massive mistake on her, where I did give her sort of 600 resistance and it didn't really help that much. And um, putting her in a stall set and just pushing up her defense really helped a lot. So we've got um, HP gloves, um, defense chest, speed boots, which I'm thinking about actually subbing out for um, HP and just maybe re-gearing her and getting speed from elsewhere. Uh, defense ring, defense amulet, and then defense on the banner as well. So 44k HP, 4.1 defense. So we really pushed that defense up to really help with her survivability. Uh, quite slow at 200 um, speed, but that was kind of really helpful, slowing it down actually, because originally I've got one, I've got one God Seeker's got like 250 speed and 70k HP, and she was actually dying a lot just because she didn't have that survivability with the defense. And the rest of the stats really don't matter. And then masteries, the most important ones are making sure that you get um, loads of healing. So you want all that healing and then um, increasing healing again, but also reducing the AOE damage that you receive and also delay on death as well. So all of that really helps with her survivability. So those are the most important things for your like revivers. Uh, the Mytha, we've gone stool and Immortal again. Uh, gloves, we've got Defense chest HP, HP on the boots, a defense ring, defense amulet, and then a defense uh, banner as well. So 68k HP, so big boy stats here, uh, 4.2k defense, and quite slow at 207 as well. Um, and then the rest of the stats don't really matter. Masteries, I haven't finished uh, on her just yet. But again, very similar, just making sure that we've got like loads of HP, loads of healing, and then just making sure you get that reduced uh, reduced um, AOE damage as well. So that's the Mytha. Next up, we've got Brogni. Where are you, my friend? Brogdizzle. Um, so once again, HP gloves, um, HP boots, uh, HP chest, HP boots. Then defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and HP on the banner. So originally I actually had a little bit more HP on him, but actually swapping it out for defense actually helped a lot and gave him more survivability. So 90, 97k HP, big boy of stats. Um, I could actually glyph him out a bit more as well, but um, I haven't, not yet anyway. Um, and then we got 31k defense and then 210 speed. So it's a little bit faster than Demitha and Godseeker, which is good. Um, so basically he puts out his um you know his buffs first and then they'll extend them 
and then nothing else really matters but obviously for other content you may want to increase his accuracy or for like an arena defense you may want to increase his resistance but yeah pretty solid champion though you can build him you know he's actually a really diverse champion you can build in many different ways um, and then i've sort of to be fair looking at this i would probably actually change his masteries and take support tree instead of offense and once again make sure i increase his shield with um shield bearer and increase his healing with lay on hands as well but um yeah solid solid build on him and then mithrala um she can yeah another champion you can sort of build it different ways for different content but uh i really like her in triple perception especially for iron twins so we've got defense gloves um accuracy on the chest um hp on the boots um so this this glove um glove this this ring um the re it should be like defense but the reason it's attack is basically for arena is the only reaction piece that i've got so just basically to help her survive um on my go second team for arena and um, then we've got a hp um amulet and then we've got an accuracy banner um so 59k hp 3.4k defense 229 speed so quite fast um and then resistance is actually important now is important on her so 225 resistance 619 accuracy so with her aura as well i think that means she's got like 700 plus accuracy so that means she's got around sort of 300 uh, sorry 1000 resistance um so yeah just insane champion and these are like just the sort of standard masteries i think most people take on her so yeah solid champion uh, one mistake i've made though is she doesn't really need harvest of despair um yeah i guess it can land because of pe uh, because of parrots on vacation sorry petrification so if the debuff does land of pa uh, parrots on vacation um then she'll throw out a leech um but otherwise it's probably better to take delay on death to be honest but it's up to you but yeah she is a, just an amazing champion and definitely when you get her from hydra definitely you know six star masteries gear just do it straight away on her. She will change your account. So guys, just before we round things up, I do want to have a quick look at these uh, Altar of Souls and look at the Soul Merchant. So just want to have a little bit of a rant. Um, you know, generally I'm a positive person, but I want to be realistic as well. Um, I think, um, yeah, so basically when you buy these souls, uh, things start to go up in price. And actually I do have a Trunda. So let's actually buy this because I do want to sort of do her up. But... What happens is um, when you buy these souls, they do start to increase in price. And I did see someone the other day where they was like, um, you could get a Crisk four star and you needed 300 of these gold, what are they? Soul essences. And like, I've only got 16 after two weeks now. And it just feels like, say you've got like, you know, your, say you like your arena team, you've got four champions. I feel that to fully awaken them, six red stars is gonna take you about six months. I just feel that's way too long. Like, um, I think they really need to reevaluate and relook at the pricing here. Um, I feel that you should probably be able to do four champions a month. So that's one a week. I think that sounds pretty reasonable and pretty decent. Um, you know, I do understand that this shouldn't be done straight away, but I do feel as well, though, I do feel like it's going to take about six months and six months to fully, um, like, you know, fully max out your champions is a very long time, especially for even for like end game players. I do feel like it's a bit of a joke. So they do need to change it and start redoing the pricing and stuff. And I don't want to talk about the RNG of, is it um, Soul Summon Stones? I don't want to look at that at the moment because, you know, it's just a bit silly. Like, you know, like I've got champions I don't even have here. Like um, whoever that is, I don't have a. So yeah, there's something they do need to look at. But anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's move on from that. Um, if you guys do have any champion, uh, sorry, any team comps that absolutely smash uh, Spirit Affinity, Iron Twins, you know, please drop a comment below. Um, share your team comp, share the gear, share the stats that you've got and stuff. You know, help help some people get that one key. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.